All right, good morning. Good morning. Uh, I'm going to talk today about our divine unfoldment. I believe that the spiritual journey that we are all on, and I think everybody is on a spiritual journey, is actually a process of divine unfoldment. It comes from within us, because we teach that the divinity already exists and it exists within us, and that divinity that's within us is actually seeking a way out into the world. So one of the ways I often say this is that spirit within us is seeking a fuller and greater expression of itself. You know, we often sing the song, it's in every one of us. It's already there. So contrary to the you'll be okay when something out here in the world comes into your life, something out here is going to make it better, that's the predominant thinking of the world around us. In the science of mind, we teach that you lack nothing right now, even though you may think, oh, I got to get this, I need that, blah, blah, blah. No, the truth is, you as a spiritual being right now, you are whole, you are perfect, you are complete, you lack no good thing. You know, and, and, um, the fullness, the allness of God is already within each and every one of us. Right? So what do I mean by that? I mean that all the love, all of the peace, all of the creativity, all of the abundance, all of the joy, it already exists within each and every one of us. And we say, well, how can that be? All right, listen to this. God is everywhere equally present. We teach that. So if God, and that means God's qualities, are everywhere equally present, there's no spot where God is not. Right? I mean, you cannot, you cannot possibly be the one exception in the entire universe, in the entire cosmos, you can't be the one place where God is not. Right? God's everywhere except where I am. I don't think so. It's, God is everywhere, and that includes right where we are. You say, well, okay, if it's there, you know, the greatness of God is within us, well, what's the deal? Well, it seems to me that very often we hide it, or we're, we're saving it. You know, or uh, maybe we've retired it. Yeah, that's a good, we've retired it, you know. Well, I've already been aware of the greatness of God within me. I've used it. I'm not, I'm not doing any more of that. See, every person, though, has the capacity to grow. Because, you know, we, we think of it as sort of life starts here and ends here. But actually, your soul is on a journey that existed long before you got to this planet, that, this school, Earth. And your soul will continue long, long, long after you leave here. So we're not dealing... Uh, with a very short little increment of time here, what we're dealing with is infinity. And every person has the capacity to keep growing, to keep evolving, to keep being more than they have ever been before. You know, we may become as tall as we're ever going to be in this life, okay, but our mental and spiritual growth can go on and on and on forever, I believe. You know, as life uh, unfolds, what we notice is and tell me if this is true for you, because this has certainly been so for me. What I've noticed is again and again, things come around that I thought I dealt with. Like, oh, I thought I healed that. I thought I handled that. Why is that back again? You know, is, is there something wrong with me? What's in my consciousness that this has come back to me again? Well, Ernest Holmes teaches this concept that your soul is on a journey, and that journey is going on an upward spiral. So you never backslide. You never regress. But that spiral is always upward and forward. So, so say at the, this is, we'll call this edge here, the front of the spiral. At the front of the spiral, you may have been here before, but when you were here before, you were down low. And now the spiral has evolved up, maybe a couple of turns, and here you are back again. The difference is you're at a different place in consciousness. You have more spiritual tools. You have more spiritual maturity now. So you look at the same situation differently. You bring different tools to cope with the same situation completely differently than you did before. So it's not like, oh, I thought I healed this, but I clearly I didn't. What's wrong with me? Now, just put that aside. Your soul is visiting something for again, so you can handle it even better now. See, the situation, it's, it may be the same situation, but you're in a new place, right? Experiences in and of themselves don't really teach us anything, do they? I mean, really don't. We have lots of experiences that teach us absolutely nothing, right? But how we respond in those situations, how we respond to those experiences reflects our belief in ourself, reflects the faith that we have at that particular time reflects our knowledge of our, ourselves and life, our consciousness. So the new, better, and different consciousness that I bring is the thing, right? If I keep meeting situations the way I've met them in the past, well, then things are probably going to pan out like they have in the past, which, you know, may be good, but maybe not so much, right? 
So I believe, you know, as students of the science of mind, we're always working to expand our consciousness, to enlarge our consciousness, to feel like we have a greater sense of dominion over how we participate in life. Now, I realize we cannot control everything, right? But our consciousness contributes to how we experience everything that does unfold in our life. And so this requires a conscious effort on our part. You know, so like I said, the growth part is not actually automatic. Right? This is why I say, you know, we, we hide the greatness of God that's within us. I know and I believe the greatness of God exists in every person. But so often people are like, nope, got to shove that down, got to shove that down, don't want to let that squeak out, no, 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 no. Or, or we're saving it. Say, so, you know, gee, when I get with some better people or I'm in a better circumstance, then I'll really let the greatness of God within me out. When I get a better project, that's when I'm going to really shine, you know. Or, or we say, you know, gee, I've already done it. I've done it. I'm not doing that anymore. That's just too much work. I know often on the path it's easy to get distracted. You know, we'll say, okay, well, I believe in the greatness of God that's in other people, but not so much in me. Or we fall into like a slump or a rut, you know? And then what we do is once we're in the rut, we decorate the rut. Yeah, that's it. I'll make the rut nice so it's a little more comfortable. And I'd say, well, you know, it's my rut. It's not so bad. You know, some people don't even have a rut. I should be happy I have a rut, you know? God, the universe, is, is very, very patient with, with us because it knows eventually, eventually, we're going we're gonna to head that way. You know, I, I'm certain that one of the lessons I'm learning is patience in this life uh, because it comes around again and again and again as if God keeps asking me, how do you want to handle this now? You know, how would you like to handle this this, this time? Would you like to show up as the person you say you want to be now? Or do you want to go back to doing it the way you've done it before? You know, I'm, I'm certain patience is in there. I'm certain it's there. And I'm just uh, waiting, encouraging, and affirming that it's coming forward. Um, you know, you know what I think of it's like, it's like when you go to a Chinese restaurant, there are those pieces of foil-wrapped chicken. They're like little triangles. And there's a, you know there's a piece of chicken in there, right? But it's like totally covered up in origami. I mean, it is wrapped so well, you know, that it's like, okay, I know there's something good in here if I can just get to it, but the process of getting to it, it's like, this is going to be a lot of work, and I'm probably going to wind up covered in chicken juice before I leave. Do I really want to do this in front of other people? Um, so I, what I notice is that God is patient with us, right? That we don't, we don't have to hurry. In fact, I've noticed that you can put stuff off for a while. You can. You can really put stuff off for a while. But what you'll notice is it always comes around again. It's like those people we don't want to see. You know, you can avoid them for a while, but eventually they come around again. They just kind of show up. Because if there's anybody, if there's anybody you have unfinished business with on the face of the planet, they're coming. You know? Maybe not this afternoon, but they're going to show up in your life again. And if not exactly them, it will be somebody who reminds you of them, or you have the same relationship with them. So you're going to have to work it out eventually, because that's part of why we're here. So you know, we determine, I think, the speed of our progress, is what I'm trying to say. Our growth in spiritual unfoldment is all up to us. It's in our own hands. You know? But just notice, just notice if you're somebody who wants to delay it, if you're somebody who likes to procrastinate. I think this is often due to a lack of confidence, you know? Like, oh, I'm not ready to take that on. I'm not ready. No, you have everything you need within you right now to face the circumstances, the experiences of your life. You know, it's easy to see where we don't put forth the necessary effort toward being, uh, toward success, you know, because we may be dominated by our unbelief, right? Our faith is not so strong in that area, you know, our feelings of inadequacy or, uh, and the obstacles that, you know, we're going to have to, uh, that, that we're going to have to overcome. Oh my God, it's so much. So there was this carload of nuns, okay? And they are traveling down a lonely desert highway and they run out of gas. What do we do now? Well, we have to have faith, says one of the sisters. You're right. We shall all pray. And so they do. And shortly after that, a truck driver stops and says, hey, sisters, can I help you? And they say, oh, well, you know, we're out of gas. And he says, oh, well, as a matter of fact, I just so happen to have a can of gas. He says, and you can have it. I don't have a hose or a funnel, but you can have the gas. And they say, oh, thank you. God has blessed us. This is wonderful. Thank you. Thank you so much. So he gives them the gas, and he has to drive on. And they said, well, what do we do now? And they said, well, we have to have faith. And the sister again says, we should pray. So they all circle up and they pray again. Shortly after that, 
a salesman of hospital supplies stops his car. Yeah. And he gets out and he says, oh, sisters, are you having any trouble? Is there anything I can do to help you? And they said, well, we're out of gas. And somebody gave us a can of gas, but we don't have a funnel or a hose. You know, do you have anything that would help us get the gas into the tank? And he rummages around the trunk of his car and he finds a bedpan. <laughs> and he thinks, well, if they work slowly, this will probably do it. You know, and so they thank him very much. And they put some gas into the bedpan. And they're pouring the gas from the bedpan into the gas tank. And these two good old boys, local guys, go driving by. And they slow down. And they look out the window at the sisters. And they look back at each other. And they look at the sisters. And one of them says to the other, now that is faith. <laughs> yeah. So. Mentally, as students of the science of mind, we have to know that there's a part of us that's always above the condition. You know, we have to keep ourselves above the condition at a higher level than the circumstances that surround us. You know, and I know when you're in it, it feels like, oh my God, this is all there is. But you know, Einstein said you can't solve a problem at the level of consciousness that created the problem. So we have to get to higher ground. So I'll tell you. Um, I was in Hawaii. I was, on, uh, I was at a training in Hawaii. And the first three nights of the training in Hawaii, uh, we stayed out uh, at Volcano National Park. This is on the Big Island. And uh, I had never done that before. And you know, people in Hawaii who live uh, in the area of the volcano have uh, an awe and a respect and a humility around the volcano. Uh, because if you think you're a big deal, um, you go where you really see evidence of the Earth as a living, moving thing. So places that I had hiked many times before don't exist anymore. They've just dropped into the core of the Earth because with the lava flow that happened six months ago, they lost 800 homes. And, um, and there was a lot of land that used to be there that's now, it's just not there anymore. You know, the, the, the scene changes. So my first night, Staying on the volcano, I'm staying in this, this little cottage, and I no sooner fall asleep, and there's an earthquake. And I think, volcano! You know? So the first thing I do is I look out all the windows to see if there's lava flowing in my direction, which, of course, if there were, it would all have been over so fast. Um, and, uh, and so I thought, well, no, that was just an earthquake. I'm from Southern California. I experience these often enough. And I immediately fell back asleep. Well, the next morning, I run into the group. And everybody's talking about, did you feel the earthquake last night? Was it the volcano? I thought it was the volcano. Oh my god, we could have been swallowed up by a volcano and all this. And I just thought, nah, I'm from LA. We have earthquakes all the time. That just felt like an earthquake to me. You know, but I, why did I tell you that? Um, well. Because there's always a part of us that's above the condition, you know? So in that moment, sure, it could be frightening. I think, oh my god, what's going on? But part of us, part of, there is a spiritual component to each of us that is completely untouched by the circumstances that we are going through. You know, we're learning not to be controlled by conditions. You know, all of us want to remember, you know, the good, the God, the spirit in us is greater than whatever's going on out here. It's greater than our particular human faults and foibles. We're stronger than, than our weaknesses. You know, our desire for life to be harmonious, our desire for life to be peaceful, loving, abundant, all of those good things outweighs any part of us that doesn't want that or works against that or is maybe even a little bit rebellious. You know, every day, I think, is our personal opportunity to express a greater good. You know, and how will I do that? You know, it's not about, is this a good day? Every day is a good day in potential if we decide to make it a good day. Right? And so that's what I want us to do. I want us to have a firm resolve in our mind that it's a good day because I say it is a good day. You know, your words have power. We teach that in Sunday school. Your words have power. Right? So it's a good day because you declare it to be a good day. And when you declare it to be a good day, then everything around you will start to organize itself to support you in it being a good day. And just because something isn't to your liking doesn't mean it isn't a good day. Right? It can still be a good day in spite of. See, the experiences we have are not things within and of themselves. They have no power of good or bad. You have the power to make 
each experience good. So you know, I'm, I'm fascinated with this cultural anthropologist, Angelus Arian. Uh, she's up in Northern California, and I've done some work with her over the years. And she says that many native cultures believe that our heart is the bridge between Father Sky and Mother Earth. So just think about that. I think that's a beautiful thing, that our heart is the bridge between Father Sky and Mother Earth. In other words, our heart is that place where the infinite, infinite touches uh, in a very personal way. And so our heart has four chambers. I've talked about this. And that these traditions, these um, native traditions, feel that it's important to check the conditions of the four chambers of your heart every day. You know, and so I want to share this again because I've been I've been on this little rant about this for a while and, and trying to work with this personally, and I'm really getting something out of it. And the first one I have to ask myself is today, am I full hearted? You know, if not if I'm not full hearted, the way I approach people, the way I, I participate in situations is gonna be half hearted. And we all know what it's like when we're with somebody who's doing something that's half hearted, or when we're engaged in something but it's only mm, half-hearted, right? You know, feeling like I should do something when I don't want to is kind of the breeding ground for half-heartedness, that should energy. You know, if we feel half-hearted, we might be in the wrong place and need to remove ourselves. It's an interesting thing to consider. You know, but how I want to participate in my life and the things I do is I want to participate with a full heart. Am I open-hearted? If I'm defensive, you know, encountering my own resistance, as I often do, you know, and protecting myself from the possibility of hurt, I, what I really want to do in those situations, I, I feel that push from inside me, that what I want to do is I want to soften and reopen the heart, right? And say, am I clean, uh, excuse me, <coughs> am I clear-hearted? You know, do I carry any indifference, uh, uh, a confusion or doubt? If so, what I'm after is I want to pray for clarity rather than take action. You know, Ernest Holmes said somewhere, I remember reading in his early writings, if he had only one treatment to do, if he had only one prayer, he would pray for clarity because from clarity, he would know, from that place of clarity, he would know exactly what he was to do next. Mm -hmm. Um, am I strong-hearted or do I lack the courage to say what is true for me? Boy, I think this applies to a lot of people, especially now, especially now in the time we live. When I'm strong-hearted, I have the courage to be all of who I am in my life. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, it's full, open, clear, and strong-hearted. I think for unfoldment to take place, I believe we have to have um, what I think of as, as a real, genuine, sincere life of prayer. I can't tell you how important this is. Not, and, and this is prayer that is not prayer going to God to get something, right? Because God does not have things to give. I know that's going to sound really disappointing. Why? Because God has already given them all. God is not withholding. So I want us to move from thinking of God as, like I've, I have often said, the Santa Claus busboy hitman kind of God, to, to, to you know, oh, oh, divine principle, please bring me this. Oh, divine principle, I want that. God's already doing that. God's already doing that. The problem is that we are not graciously receiving. We don't have the faith to experience, okay? So shift away from Santa Claus, busboy, hitman, to more of the force. Cue John Williams music, you know, you know Star Wars music, you know. That, it's more of a force, a force that's primary qualities are love and intelligence, Okay, and Ernest Holmes says that, you know, that God is a, a principle that we, and the principle we set in motion when we treat, but he says also that God is love, and love is a presence that we court, and this is why we have to sit and be still like we did this morning when we meditated. So, so the place to go for whatever we want, whatever it is you want, the place to go first is the kingdom within. Right? You know, but don't go to God like, like God is just going to be the dispenser of gifts. We are praying now for the experience of God. You know, it says, seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and everything else will be added. So if we can get to that place in here, in our own spiritual consciousness, you know, that heavenly place, and know, all right, God has already said yes. So it's my job to be 
uh, open-hearted here, to be able to receive what God has given. You know, we're now praying for the experience of God, you know, knowing that with the experience of God, all the things that are required for us to be happy, healthy, and free, those things will be provided. You know, if, if, if you are unsure, then, you know, if, uh, because people all want to, people all want to hear the voice, you know, and I think I have heard a voice, literally heard a voice, maybe a handful of times in my life. But, you know, if you were, so, so people say, well, is, is that the still small voice? No. Was, was that it? Was that it? No, no. That must have been the voice. No. If you're unsure, that wasn't it. That's the bottom line. You know, when, when you have it, you'll know it, right? There's no uncertainty about it. The only way we'll experience anything is through our consciousness. So, so know with me that all good, all good is within you, within me right now, because God put it there, and it's our job to always be in that place where we are opening a way out for it to come forward and express in a greater way. Let's pray. Thank you. Uh, so as we join together in consciousness this morning, we take a moment to dwell in that secret place of the Most High, you know, and abide under the shadow of the Almighty. We know that God that is everywhere is right where we are. In fact, we are one with God because we are one of God's. We know that this is God's day, that we are children of the Most High, of the Father Mother. And this day, all of us are guided by that presence of the living spirit that's within us. So knowing our connection with God and our connection with each other, I speak the word for each and every one of us, knowing that our lives are unfolding exactly as they are supposed to that we have everything within us to meet the challenges of the day. We have the spiritual resources, the love, the patience, the compassion, the wisdom. Everything we need exists within us right now. And we know that this is God's day, absolutely in every way that God's presence goes before us, the Spirit walks beside us, and that Spirit of God is within us, fulfilling us in every moment. So we let our prayer be a blessing in the world around us. So all of those things that we're thinking about, all of the people that we're caring about, we remember that God is right there. We let our prayer be a blessing for our parents and our children, our family members. We know that they are surrounded by God's Spirit. They are filled with infinite intelligence and that they are always making the right decisions. That they are blessed, they are healed, and they are whole. We bless our church. We bless all churches everywhere. Synagogues, temples, mosques, ashrams, all paths to God. And I know that we are blessed by being together, that there's something that happens by all of us coming together and praying that everyone gets lifted up. And so with a full heart, I give thanks that this is so. I release this word, and so it is. Together we all say, Amen. Amen.